What is good y'all welcome back to the channel man we are here we are back and we're going to be doing a video where we talk about the biggest draft sleepers in the 2024 nba draft we've done mock drafts we've done big boards we're going to be doing a very 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 comprehensive analysis on the biggest five draft sleepers in the 2024 nba draft this is all my opinion um and what i did for you guys you guys will see I, I made it very easy for you guys to understand why i feel like these guys are sleepers i went up and pulled up um kevin o'connor's uh his, his scouting report on all these guys so you guys can see exactly what they do um it's it's a lot easier for you guys to see it as well if i'm explaining it so you guys can follow through with it so uh shout out to the ringer for that um most of the prospects have that scouting report up for the others I had to you know for there was like one that i had to pull up uh because he was so slept on kevin o'connor didn't even have him on his top 55 but um we're gonna be talking about that so make sure you guys get you know your likes and subscribe if you guys are new comment down below on the road to 10k Let's get right into it. So um, at number one, again, no order whatsoever. We're going to be going with Jalen Bridges out of Baylor. Um, this dude is the quintessential 3 and D prospect, man. I mean, he is a very, very NBA ready player. You, you, you'll see like from the um, players that I've selected, a lot of the players have very, very similar um, traits. And uh, one thing is really common, and I'm pretty sure all five players um, is that they're NBA ready. These guys can come in right now and they can contribute on an NBA team if they need to. Jalen Bridges is one of the best 3 and D players in the draft to me. Um, 43 is what his ranking is on the ringers, uh, you know, draft board. I would have him top 35 minimum, but you know, 43, I, I understand a lot of people aren't familiar with Jalen Bridges game a lot. Uh, Baylor wasn't really the best team. A lot of people are talking about Yves Missy from that team. Yves Missy is really good, but um, and Jacoby Walter as well, but Jalen Bridges is a guy that I think is going really under the radar uh, to me. Um, this guy is a very, very good shooter. I mean, 41.2% from three um, and an elite defender as well. Um, you know, look at his scouting report from Kevin O'Connor on ball defense, catch and shoot, off ball mover. I mean, it seems like a three and D ace to me compared to Royce O'Neal crossing Mikael Bridges. I like that comparison. Um, dynamic shooter with clean mechanics um, is absolutely correct. High IQ player without the ball. Yes, one thing I forgot to mention is that he has an extremely high IQ, man. This guy um, will make the right play, doesn't make too many mistakes, and he has a very, very um, good you know, defensive presence. Competitive defender with long wingspan. Um, his, his weaknesses and minuses is that he's an inconsistent three-point shooter um, until his senior year. That is true. He, he had a pretty massive improvement on his three-point shooter, three-point shooting um, from his first three years to his senior season. Um, but his free throw percentage has always been great. Like it says, 80% clear for the line throughout his college career. And he's a low usage player. That's completely fine to me. I mean, I'm not expecting this guy to be a on the ball player. I'm expecting him to be an off the ball mover. Uh, seven foot wingspan, can shoot the ball, can defend. He's he's older. He's already 23. He's a senior, but he's going to come in right away. And whoever drafts him is going to be getting a guy who can contribute right away. Who can be a very, very, very good piece um, on a contending team. So he's my you know, first sleeper. Um, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I, I really don't think he's going to fail in the league. You know, a lot of these guys are picked. I just don't think they have any chance to be busts or be guys who can't make impacts. I think all of these guys will make an impact some sometime in their career, especially at the start of it. So Jalen Bridges is the first guy. The second guy is going to be none other than Bub Carrington. He is probably my favorite player on this whole list. Huge fan of his game. I would have him top, top 20, top 15 even. Um, 23 is where he's at, according to the ringer. Amazing, amazing shot creator, man. Really good pull-up threat. Big Lou Williams, um, I can see that. I can see Big Lou Williams. Uh, filthy mid-range score is absolutely correct. Very good, you know, um, crossover, tight handle. Um, he's really, really good with his uh, pull-up jump shot. I mean, that's his biggest strength. Um, I see a lot of, like, Jamal Murray in that sense. Jamal Murray takes a lot of pull-up shots. I can see that from Bob Carrington as well. Um, and I, I also think he's a really good playmaker as well. Doesn't really turn the ball over too much. His assist to turn turnover ratio is pretty good. Um... The only like knock on his game to me is that he's not like an amazing finisher. Um, and I feel like at the rim, he's not as great. But when he's, you know, shooting the ball and creating shots for himself and other people, it's like a sight to see to me. I'm, I'm just a huge fan of that aspect to his game. Um, he's not the best catch and shoot three point shooter. He shot 32% from three. Um, and he's, again, not the biggest. I don't think the weight or the frame is like a big concern to me. I mean, I think I think that'll all come along. But um, 
yeah the finishing i do want to see him work on getting to the rim more and then finishing at the rim and i also do want to see on um him working on his catch and shoot three uh, but at the combine he was shooting the ball really well and, and 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 he was you know very very good in the combine um so i'm a huge fan of his game i, I really think that whoever drafts him is going to be getting a guy who can just come off the bench right away and just just, just get buckets and um I would take him top 20. I would even take him borderline top 15. Like that's how good I think he can be. Um, if he just improves his you know, ability to finish and get to the rim consistently, I mean, you're looking at a guy who I think can be one of the best scorers in this class. So um, I have him as one of my sleepers for sure. Um, and he is number two on the list. At number three, um, this guy is so slept on. He had no report on uh, Kevin O'Connor's page. That's Nick Clifford from Colorado State, man. Neek Clifford is a wing from Colorado State. He's a 6'6 wing, um, senior, 24 years old. Um, and this guy, again, like Jalen Bridges, is a very quintessential 3 and D prospect. Um, I think Neek Clifford is a little bit more effective on the ball than Jalen Bridges, but I don't think he's as good of a defender. But if you look at the company he's in in the stat in the graph uh, or the chart below, Mikael Bridges, Chris Duarte, Vince, uh, Vince Williams, um, who was a very good, you know, uh, player for the Grizzlies last season, or, I mean, or this year, this year. I mean, that's really a company to be in. And um, you know, if you look at all these, I mean, there's there's four players on here, and it's filtered where the usage is over 20 uh, percent. Um, he's played over 15 games, effective field goal percentage, defensive rebounding, assists, blocks, steals, three point percentage, three point attempts, um, dunks. Like all these are filtered, and the company that he puts himself in is really, really good. And I think Nick Clifford, I mean, I, I think he's really, really good with the ball. I think he's good without the ball. Um, I think he can finish at the rim. I think he can shoot. I think offensively, he's a really good weapon. I like, I love his mid range game. Um, his shooting improved drastically from junior year to senior year. He improved by about 5% from three. He improved from um, the line by a ton. I think 15, 16% from the line. Um, he's not the biggest. He's only 6'5", 6 6'6". 6 6, uh, to me, um, I think he's about 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, it says right here 6'6". Six, six. But um, honestly, I don't think that's going to be a big concern. You can put him at the two. You can put him at the three. Um, he can guard. Uh, he's not you know an elite defender to me he's not as good of a defender as a jalen bridges but he is a he's a very very solid serviceable defender and i think you can put him on you know a guy who who's going to be scoring the ball on the, on the other team you can put him on um them and he, he'll hold his own he's not he's a competitive player uh i just love his offense man i think his offense is like the biggest asset to me though his, his pull-up game ability to you know finish at the rim with his athleticism his ability to shoot the ball um, really love Nick Clifford. I'm not sure how he did not crack Kevin O'Connor's top 55. I mean, I would be, I would consider him taking, um, taking him at, you know, you know, 40, like as high as 40, maybe 35. Like he would go top 40 to me. And like, if I had to do a big board, he was, he's going to be like top 40, hundred percent. I'm not sure if I'd have him, you know, in the first round, if he's first round to me, he's like late first round, but definitely, definitely is no later than 40 to me. So that is Nick Clifford. He's number three on the list at number four. We have a guy named Deron Holmes, and Deron Holmes is ranked 28 on uh, Ringer's board. It's not crazy by any means. I have him going borderline top 20. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Deron Holmes' game. ESPN had Deron Holmes at, Holmes at 50. I'm pretty sure it was ESPN or might have been Bleacher Report, and I almost lost it. I was like, bro, what is this? Like, Deron Holmes is an absolute stud. I mean, he was um, one of the reasons that Dayton, you know, got past Nevada in that first game in the March Madness tournament and the Combine. Um, he performed quite well. Um, he wasn't amazing. He didn't light things up, but he was pretty good. Deron Holmes is just a guy who's like a modern big man. He's 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 not like the biggest. He's six nine, six ten, but he can play five. He can play the four. I think he's mobile. Um, he can switch. Um, he can you know finish at the rim. He, he's athletic. He can catch lobs. He can block shots. He can also shoot the ball. I don't know what else you really want from a center in today's league, but this guy gives you everything. He is very good at protecting the rim. He's very good at switching out on guards. He can shoot the ball at an elite level um, and has done last year. He shot 39% from three. He is a, is a pretty solid rebounder, averages nine rebounds per game. He can score inside. He can score in the mid-range area. He can score in the paint. He's an intelligent you know, player. He's a good passer. Um, 
I really, really do think that offensively, he has a total package. Like, I don't think there's anything he can't do offensively. And defensively, you're asking, you're talking about a guy who averages two blocks a game, but can still switch on, onto the perimeter. He's easily a top 20, even borderline top 15 prospect to me. I'm a huge fan of his game. I really like Deron Holmes. I think if I had to pick between Deron Holmes and a lot of bigs, I would go with Deron Holmes. If you had to pick between Deron Holmes and Zach Eady, I'm going Deron Holmes. I'm picking him over Khalil Ware. I'm picking him over, um, you know, a lot of guys, you know, who are in the same position or something. And I'm, and, and I'm not going to lie, like, I don't think a lot of people are giving him the attention, but I have him really, really high on my draft board. I would take him with the top 20 pick. I think he's going to be an ex exceptional player. If any team needs a center, if any team needs to play him with the center or play him with the power forward, this guy can play four. He can play five. He's very skilled offensively and defensively. He's, 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 he competes. Um, he has a high motor. He, he's versatile. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm just really, really a big fan of his game. And I, I hope that whoever drafts him puts him in the right situation because I think he can be a really good player, really good weapon um, offensively and defensively. Um, so that is Deron Holmes. And finally, my fifth prospect is going to be Tyler Kolek. Not sure why Tyler Kolek is not get, being getting talked about either. I mean, if you look at what TJ McConnell has been doing in the playoffs, I mean, I don't really see why Tyler Kolek can't do similar things to him. Um, Tyler Kolek is an elite, elite, elite point guard in this class. Um, very good playmaker, extremely good playmaker, um, average eight assists per game with that Marquette team. And whenever he was on the floor, you could see the difference in the teams, man. You could see whenever Marquette um, was playing and Tyler Kolek was playing, he just made such a big difference to that team. And when he was off the floor, you saw a big drop off. Um, I think offensively, he doesn't really lack anything. He has a really good pull up game um, and he has a good you know, three point shot. He's left handed. I've seen a lot of Goran Dragic. I've seen a lot of Jalen Brunson comps like you see right here. Um, I, I, I look at him as like a left handed like TJ McConnell, Goran Dragic type. I mean, Goran Dragic is left handed, but I don't think he's as skilled of a scorer as Goran. Because uh, I want to res respect Goran and Brunson. I don't think he's to that level as far as scoring the ball yet. I think he can become that. But right now, to me, he's more of a, um, you know, guy who, who who will beat you with his intangibles, man. He's a very smart, high IQ player, a great feel for the game. Really, really quick first step. Can get past defenders. He's very crafty around the rim. He's not like an amazing athlete by any means, but he's very crafty with his pivots and footworks and floaters. Um... He's very, very good with his passing. He can, you know, beat a defender off the dribble and kick it out very easily. Knockdown three-point shooter. Um, his defense is, you know, mostly, mostly has been good because of his IQ and because of his motor and effort. He's not the physically, you know, physically he's not the biggest or most athletic whatsoever, but he makes up for that with his hustle and heart and his, you know, his, his IQ, his, his, his motor, his um, intelligence. Um, and he is an amazing, amazing leader. He, this guy is going to be a guy who's going to lead your team, um, be the heart and voice of your team, um, be the engine of your team. I mean, he's he's one of these guys like like every team could use. You, you look at all these guys who, you know, winning championships. And I mean, I, I love the TJ McConnell comp because TJ is kind of the same guy with the Pacers, man. He comes in and he's, you know, an incredible leader of that bench group, the second unit. He plays with a great motor. You always feel his presence on the floor. I think Tyler Cole can do a lot of the same things, man. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just think that he's just a very, very good prospect. I don't really think anybody who drafts him is getting a bad player at all. I think they're going to be getting a guy who's going to be, you know, one of their guys. And um, he's going to be a fan favorite from for, for whichever team he's drafted to. Um, I just do not see any bust potential with this pick whatsoever. So I love Tyler Kolek and... Uh, that's going to conclude, you know, my, my five sleepers in the 2024 NBA draft. I mean, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, let me know if you guys want me to do more of these type of videos. You know, I want to do a lot more draft content as we get closer and closer to the draft. So um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and um, give me your top five draft sleepers. You know, we can all have different sleepers. It's all fine. Or if you guys have the same sleepers as me, that's fine. If you guys think I'm missing someone, let me know down in the comment section below. Um, and yeah, we're going to wrap it up here, man. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe and comment down below. I'll see you later as always. Peace.